Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a review of Crisis 2. I know it's a little old, but it's purely because Crisis 3 has just come out, um, which I've just purchased and I want to do a review of that one as well. So the idea is to compare this one to that one to see if the brand has improved with age like a fine single malt whiskey or if it's just got even worse like a drag queen that really shouldn't still be doing it at 55. So the first thing you shall see when you put this game in is a lot more linear than the first game was. Um, the areas aren't quite as open and I think that is really due to the fact that it's been built from the ground up to work on consoles really and the current generation hardware. But it's not to its detriment really. Um, I mean this game is far prettier than that girl you always fancied but could never quite chat up. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm sure it'd look even better running on a, a gaming PC rig, but to say this is running on an Xbox 360, which is probably older these days and most people actually own one, I think it's just fantastic really. Uh, the sound effects are brilliant on it as well, and the theme tune personally I love. If you can call it theme tune, I don't know what's on it, the intro sequence anyway. Um, now the nano suit has been improved as well. Um, if you've never played this game before, basically you'll have an armor mode which bullets and explosions will bounce off you. And you'll have a little energy bar on the bottom right, so basically it'll absorb bullets. So as you can see now, you can go around in cloak stealth mode, which basically enemies cannot see you until it runs out. Um, you, whilst one of the big things that people have complained about this game is, is the suit can make it the game a little easy. Uh, well, whilst that's kind of true. I think it's kind of the point really because you're supposed to be a super soldier really in a top end well suit really um, so really, really you're better off putting this game on one of the harder difficulties from the word go purely because if you know what you're doing you, if you just use a suit as it's supposed to be used you won't really come up against many problems until later on into the game when you get the big buggers which will do a lot of damage really fast to you like you just saw a minute ago um, personally, I think this suit works a lot better on a joypad, to be honest. Uh, purely because it's just easier and it seems to flow more naturally, really. Mid-combat, just swapping between armor mode, cloak mode, thermal vision and everything. Just on the fly while she's shooting. You don't have to move things around or anything. I mean, you can argue you can set the keyboard up as you want, but I don't know. I just, I've got kind of used to it now and it just, it just it really, really works well to me. The story they've improved this time around as well, they've actually given it a proper narrative. And it's actually quite good to be honest for a first person shooter game. Basically it starts off with film clips showing New York being infected by a virus, which is basically an alien invasion game really. This virus basically has infected most of the population, which the end effects are basically liquefies humans. And there are a few nasty scenes really as you're walking around you'll see some civilians in different states really some that have just just caught the disease and other ones that are half liquefied on the floor and it's just a bit yeah. I think they've done a really good job of that as well the shooting mechanics handle really really well the suit you feel really empowered running around in the suit being able to do massive long jumps take a ridiculous amount of damage rip off turrets and everything and it's just funny sometimes as well just punching people or kicking you can kick like giant boxes or you can throw them at people to kill them as well and it really get a real sense of empowerment when you do it each weapon as well you can also spec as you want on the run you can like add silences scopes and everything and that's all done from in the game there's no going out to other menus and everything but yeah if you just look at the game to say this is running on an xbox it's absolutely amazing you do get the odd boring level of course like it's just under ground section which bothered me to death and I couldn't wait to get out of there and then you get something like this which just renews your faith and think oh god but it's quite a lengthy game as well it's about 10 to 12 hours just for the campaign and then there is a multiplayer component which I've not shown any of here but it's your standard fare it's pretty good it's just I haven't really got time to do much multiplayer these days purely because well I'm playing various different games and my multiplayer kicks I get from something Specialised really like Battlefield or Call of Duty really where it's kind of the main pull of the game really but yeah I'd say this game has been out for a while now so you can pretty much pick it up I think about 15 quid on Amazon brand new 
I definitely recommend it. I have to give this game an 8 out of 10. It's just everything works brilliantly. It's absolutely a joy to play. And it's a good lengthy campaign. And also with the multiplayer component as well, it's well worth every penny. So pick it up, have fun, jobs are good. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next time.